guys, today you catch me um, making a Funko. Someone actually reached out and asked me to make a Funko of Kelly Brain from J.R. Tolkien's The Silmarillion. So I'm going to start how I usually do with Funkos. Oh, fucking up the camera. So I'm going to start with what I usually do, taking the heads off. Now a disclaimer here, this is not meant for kids under 16. So as I'm boiling water, and taking heads off it can also cause damage to Funkos, so please if you're under a certain age, get an adult to do this part for you, or get adult supervision, ideally get an adult to do this part for you. And second of all, once the paint job is done, the Funkos are going to be coated in a layer of resin, courtesy of my best friend. Resin, if inhaled, can cause untold damage to your lungs. So if you are again going to do this part, please either abort the resin and use a, a non-toxic sealant or even better use PVA glue or don't bother varnishing it because it will stick to the vinyl fine. But I'm decapitated now so I'm now going to move on to painting. Forgive my washing machine going in the background so I'm going to move on to painting now. So now we're on to the fun part, which is painting. So the person who asked me to do this, which is my cousins in the States and in New Zealand, requested her to be wearing green. So I started off with her cape to get a rough idea of what I was going for. And just to kind of lay, lay down a base layer, because I, I originally went into this very little plan, but I knew I did want her to be wearing either a dark green on the bottom and uh, potentially light green on the top or even yellow but um, I winged it as usual but I got there I finally did kind of get a rough idea of what I wanted as the project went on now you want to mix up your paint and keep them fairly watery it's better to brush up on some layers on several watered down layers rather than just one thick layer so now I'm moving on to her hair now she's described as having silver hair, so I went in with a very watered down grey paint. You can see how watered down that is. It, as I say, it covers up the brush strokes eventually. The more layers you do, the more chance you've got of less brush strokes. We want people to think she's factory made this way. So it did take quite a few layers here and it took some figuring out of my new tripod stand as well, but I think I got there in the end. And that's me just showing it off there. You can see it will need more when it's when it's dry. So just do it bit by bit really. And that's one pretty much done. It needs another coat as you can see, but you know it will it'll be okay. And I added a nice gradient effect to the to the cape there and I'm gonna show you how I did that. So So just very carefully I mixed up a dark green for the base layer and I added black but use black sparingly because it is such a dominant colour you don't want it to overpower your work at all and then I went in with a lighter shade of green and yellow at the very tip I always have used yellow to shade green as it looks better than just slapping white on so so just very carefully just take your time doing it you know, and it generally works out a lot prettier. And I'm just going over her skirt with a with another layer, as it looked a little bit strokey, if that's even a word. So, so I'm just going back over that again, so I can get into work with a lighter shade of green. But take your time doing this. Don't rush it. You know, don't you know rush it at all. Because if you rush it. And you end up putting your hand over it, that will not be an easy fix. And now I'm just doing the front of her dress while the rest of her is drying so I can move maneuver it a bit easier. Lightly shade, lightly lighter shade of green so that it looks better and it, it looks great already. Yeah. I really love how she's looking with silver hair. It also looks great with this colour of hair. 